I'm uh, Graeme Gilmore from Tatty Curl Meat Sheep and Cattle Studs. Uh, here today to talk about Australian Mites. An Australian Mite is a, a breed developed here at Tatty Curl. It's a self-replacing meat sheep that's a hair base rather than a wool shedder. It basically has a hair coat. Uh, designed to withstand cold conditions, hot conditions, and basically it is running from snow country to a very dry country like Longreach, uh, Western New South Wales, uh, to very cold country like Oberon, where it snows quite regularly and even into overseas countries uh, like China and Inner Mongolia where it's down to minus 35 degrees and the tan of the conditions extremely well. The Australian white will run on a variety of pasture conditions. We've actually designed it that it will work on inside country on green feed. Uh, and finish readily and it will also survive in very tough conditions. So we're finding that the lambs uh, are readily finishing at about that 24 to 26 kilos uh, at four to five months of age on inside country. As soon as you go on to less productive country that, that will naturally blow out a little bit more. The idea of the Australian white was it had to be a self-replacing sheep that would match a very good second cross lamb when it's hung in a, in a cool room in an abattoir. And so we've got a good shaped carcass uh, from a self-replacing sheep where you're not out buying ewes. Once you have your core group of ewes, you become a ewe seller. So you'll be selling the bottom end of your ewes and only retaining the best ones. And all that you're doing is replacing uh, rams or adding new rams into the system. And it's totally self-replacing. You're not buying ewes in, you're not risking the introduction of different diseases, uh, you're, you're a close flock as soon as you go to an Australian white flock. So one thing that we didn't actually design into the sheep, where we designed the shedding, the carcass shape, all year round breeding, the one thing that we didn't actually design for was a superior eating quality. Once we actually found that we did have something quite unique in the eating quality, we then went into university type testing to try and find out why we had that. and and we certainly now know what that is, we've got a handle on it. The industry is very, very focused on intramuscular fat, whether it be uh, sheep or cattle, and everybody gets extremely excited about it. We consider IMF as important, but we are very, very sure with the testing that we're doing, which is raw data testing, not, uh, there's no estimation about it, that the melting point is the big driver for eating quality. So, particularly in lamb, where traditionally the normal lamb gives you a fat film in your mouth when you've eaten it. The Australian white, because of the low melting point, just doesn't give you that. So it, it's something that we're still testing through uh, the University of Townsville. And there is more and more information coming through all the time. But we are very, very certain that the big driver on the eating quality in the Australian white is the low melting point of the fat, which has been compared to Wagyu. There is a misconception out there that people are talking about the lamb industry being similar to Wagyu because of intramuscular fat. The similarities to the Australian white and the Wagyu is the melting point of that intramuscular fat, which in Wagyu can vary, but in general terms, what we've uh, been able to ascertain is that it's about 34 degrees uh, melting point on a raw sample of IMF. And the Australian white is, uh, the Taddy Hill Australian white, I should say, is sitting at that now because we've been selecting for it for several generations. With this lower melting point, the chefs are telling us that the meat cooks quicker because the heat travels through the meat faster. And once the, the meat is cooked, it's a very, very soft eating meat. It's fine in texture. And some of the American chefs are telling us is it is all about the fat and it's quality fats. So the fats that are in the Australian white are less saturated. They're not saturated fats. So just making an animal uh, with a lot of intramuscular fat. If it's the wrong fats, all you, you haven't really achieved anything. All you've done is put more fat in it. Now, we all know that the flavour of the meat is important with the fat, but it's actually the quality of those fats that are the very important thing to us. And this is something that is unique to Australian white. We have done a lot of other testing on other lambs, other breeds, and we know for a fact that the Australian white is melting at a much, much lower melting point than what other breeds are. It just means that this is quite a unique taste where it leaves you with a very clean palate. And that's, that's what we're chasing. The genetics that have been put into this breed, there is a couple of desert sheep in there that do on very little feed. And we've been able to maintain that doing ability in the sheep. So 
when things get a bit tight and a bit tough, the Australian white hangs on and you can finish it. So you're not as likely to have to feed. If you do feed, you don't have to feed as much. They certainly eat a different type of feed as well. They'll eat tougher feed than what your traditional British brood sheep will, and they'll survive on it and finish lambs. So we're also finding that this breed is not being affected by the very dry times as much in lambing percentages. We're still getting those good percentages in them, and then they're joining up again. So that's a huge advantage to a farmer that's uh, feeding and uh, a lot of a lot of clients have actually joined these ewes in feedlot conditions and getting high 90% in lamb when they're being fed in feedlot conditions, which is not ideal for joining. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest because the turnover of the Australian white is so quick that within a 12 month period, uh, a ewe lamb's born and 12 months later she's got another lamb on the ground. So it's a very quick turnover. Uh, she can be joined at readily at seven months of age. Now this is something that a lot of the industry is talking about, but we're actually doing it. The clients are doing it year in, year out. So they're getting a very, very quick return. That is something that's turning cattle people on because of the slow return on cattle. And the problem with uh, feeding cattle in the dry times, it's, it's so expensive. So it's cattle producers coming in. It is certainly some people coming in that, that are over the wool job and its fluctuations. And then we've got a, a new influx of uh, people that are coming in from the wool industry that are finding that they don't have merinos so they're not getting a lot of money for their wool and the return that they can get from an Australian white is uh, they don't have to worry about any of the shearing costs so it is an easy care sheep where if you're shearing a composite sheep the cost of shearing it is probably more than you're going to make out of the wool. Then you've got some croppers coming in where they're saying yeah well we, we used to run a few cattle but uh, that's a problem but we can run Australian whites with a cropping operation and it's not too difficult because when the flies are attacking the sheep is at the time that we're stripping the crop and we don't have to worry about flies. So with an Australian white, some people think that you're going to have one that will look like a, a short-haired dog year round. You, you really don't want that. You want one that'll put a coat on in the winter, in the cold areas and then clean it off in the summer. As long as you don't have to shear your ewe and you don't have to shear your lamb, then there isn't an issue. So they might look a bit motley at times, but that's not really a problem. As long as they're not getting fly struck, then it's not an issue. We're also finding advantages through the abattoir of uh, uh, getting less uh, burr infection or less seed infection in the skins where it's affecting carcasses because without the wool on them, uh, the wool's the thing that holds the burr in and that's what drives into the skin. So we're, we're seeing an advantage there as well. Meat yield is something that uh, we found is very high in the Australian white. If uh, an animal's putting protein into different areas, the more protein that it puts into wool, the less it's going to put into meat. And we're actually seeing higher yields from some of our pure Australian white flocks than we are with traditional crossbred lambs. We get asked a lot of questions about lice in the sheep and uh, we haven't had anybody that's had a problem with lice at all in, in the Australian white. It's certainly a problem in the rest of the industry, but we haven't seen any issues with lice in the sheep. Black feet is something that people often talk about in the breed as well, and we deliberately bred uh, black feet onto the sheep. And the reason for that is uh, you'll get less growth in the toenail on a, on a black foot than you will a white foot. Uh, particularly if you have to finish your lambs in a feedlot, it can become quite an issue, some of the white footed sheep with feet growth. So having a black foot is certainly a huge advantage in that. And now with the right genetics in there, uh, the Australian white is a, is a black footed sheep. So where we come from the Australian whites has um, been pretty dramatic in a short space of time. There's a lot of different breeding programs going around in the industry and there always is. And the breeding program that we've stuck rigorously to is uh, we've introduced everything that we needed from the four different breeds and then we closed it down and bred for the traits that we were looking for. So we're not introducing other things back into the brood to, to dilute the mix, so that we keep the mix strong so there's consistency in the carcass and particularly in consistency in, uh, in the eating quality of the meat. So if we drop something else in there, we're gonna lose those issues. So where it's come from in a short time is through the use of embryo transfer and only flushing the very best of the animals. Uh, we've seen a very, very rapid uh, rise in the consistency in the breed. Temperament's another thing that we select on, on rigorously. So the, the breed 
has evolved extremely quickly and all the testing and everything we're doing is on raw data. When I say raw data, it's not objective measurement. Uh, our data is absolute fact. Raw data to us is a biopsy between the 12th and 13th rib where we take five to 10 grams of meat from that live animal under sedation and that is analysed in a laboratory. Then we breed towards whatever way we want to push that animal or push the breed. These are issues that we followed very closely in the chicken industry with the, the testing that they were doing. Uh, they were testing on raw data and the raw data is the thing that we, we pin our hat on and we're very, very certain that we're pushing the breed in the right direction at the moment. We believe it's, it's hugely successful. It's got a massive future, not only in Australia, but around the world, because the world's hungry, it's not cold. And whilst wool's a wonderful product, uh, it's a limited market for it. There's no limit to lamb.